do you know that some of you have been listening to me for 15 years? Hmm? 15 years, 13 years, 12 years, 11, 10. And there's only one reason. I of my own self know nothing. And it's only by the grace of God that these messages keep pouring through. And if they weren't the word of God, they'd be so stale and monotonous that none of you would be lasting here after 10, 12, 15 years. And so therefore remember that the nature of supply is infinity. And it's always fresh and it's always new when it comes forth from the grace of God and not out of the stored up memory of an individual. And so it is that if you will remember this, it's a side matter at the moment, but try to remember this. That supply of every nature is as infinite as the words and messages that have been coming out of my mouth all of these uh, 17, 18 years. Just as new and just as fresh every day, as long as you're not depending on yesterday's manna, as long as you're developing the habit of going within to your consciousness to draw forth fresh supply, whether it's a supply of a message whether it's a supply of health, whether it's a supply of patience, ideas, whatever it may be, just remember that as long as you're developing the habit of going within to the kingdom of God, you are drawing forth a fresh supply. Now, This really is the truth about our financial supply. It is only in proportion as we think of yesterday's supply as being today's supply that we run into a staleness and sometimes a lack. <clears throat> it is only as we learn to turn within for a fresh supply, whether of a message, whether of health, supply in any form, only as we learn to turn within do we for draw forth God's grace in new forms, bigger forms, richer forms. Well, so it is. You take a dictionary <clears throat> and you study a lot of words in the dictionary and then eventually you decide to write stories. And probably the more words you know, the more interesting stories you can write. Because the more words you know, the more thoughts and plots and so forth will come. Now, the opposite of that is spiritual truth. In spiritual truth, you do not want to remember what you knew yesterday. In spiritual truth, you, want to, you don't even want to live on the money you had yesterday. You don't waste it, I don't mean that. But each day must be a new day in which you go within for God's grace.
and you have no idea what form God's grace is going to take. And that too is your good fortune because that opens out the way every day for the new forms, the greater forms, the greater wisdoms that are to unfold from within our consciousness. Now, why are we here? We are here to receive God's grace. Where do we find God's grace? Within our own consciousness. And therefore, the only reason for these meetings, the only reason for these tapes, the only reason for our books, is that these may serve as reminders. Just remember this, if the Bible was really the book of life, we'd all buy a Bible and live. And remember that if these books, these tapes were life, we'd just buy books and tapes and live. But no, no. These are the reminders that send us back to the kingdom of God that is within ourselves. And it is within yourself that infinity exists. The infinity of any form of supply that may ever be necessary in your experience, whether it is to appear outwardly as words, thoughts, ideas, whether it is to appear, appear outwardly as uh, designs in clothing or architecture, or bridges. Regardless of what form you are to bring forth on earth, its abiding place is within your consciousness. And therefore, every word of this message is meant to drive you back into your consciousness to draw forth the infinite nature of supply that is there. Always remember that as you go back within, you can only call it grace. Because the moment you think of it as uh, forms of architecture, or forms of money, or plots for plays, you've lost it. You've lost it because the kingdom of God hasn't any of those things. And any of those things at all. The only thing that the kingdom of God has is grace. And as you turn within for grace, that grace will appear as the form necessary to your experience. Uh, the only way I can describe it is by remembering uh, back to childhood, perhaps, that uh, my mother could whip up a great big dish of dough and then put it in a lot of little tins and have it come out fishes or elephants or birds. And we could have a lot of forms. But as a matter of fact, it was still the same dough appearing as these different forms. And so it is. You cannot go to God for forms. You can't ask God to design a house for you or to uh, diagnose a disease for you. You cannot go to God uh, to sell your apple pies. You go to God for grace. This is the substance. You turn within for grace. If you're an architect, grace will appear as these new forms that you need. If you're an artist, 
grace will appear as skill. If you're a designer, grace will appear as the skill and the designs. If you are a metaphysician, this grace will appear as healings. If you are a, whatever you may be, grace appears as that form. But for you to go to God to learn how to make apple pies will be a failure for you. Because it isn't God who knows anything about apple pies or how to make them. But God's grace reveals to us apple pies and how to make them if that happens to be our need. Now, when you turn within, you turn within for grace. Thy grace is my sufficiency in all things. That makes no difference whether we're going for health, wealth, ideas, healings, whatever it may be, we go only for grace. And the grace appears outwardly as the form necessary to your experience. And therefore, if your need today is food, it comes forth as food. If it is transportation, it comes forth as transportation. If it is an idea, it will come forth as an idea. But always remember this. God knows nothing of the forms. God knows only grace. Therefore, when we go in, we go in only for the realization of grace. Remember, God knows nothing of health, because God knows nothing of the lack of health. Therefore, there is no use of going to God for health. When we go within, we go in, go within for a realization of God's grace. And God's grace appears as health. And God's grace appears to the other one as a new design, whether it's for a bridge or a house or a dress. God's grace appears as a new kind of food or a new type of automobile. But God knows nothing of those things. Now, <clears throat> strangely enough, God knows nothing of health. Nothing. God could never recognize the name health in any language. And the reason is that God doesn't know the opposite of health either. In God there is neither health nor ill health. There is only the perfection of God's being. And it is for this reason very often that now at work, students lose the way and lose their health because they seek it. And they're seeking something through God of which God has no awareness. God has no knowledge of health. God has no knowledge of wealth. God is spirit. And the kingdom of God is spiritual. Therefore, when you go to God, you can go only for grace. Thy grace is my sufficiency in all things, whether it's a matter of health, matter of supply, talent, art. Thy grace is my sufficiency. Now, <clears throat> do you not see that regardless of our present human status, whether we are 
saint or sinner. If God knew it, we would be equally obnoxious. Because I'm sure that God is as unaware of saints as he is of sinners. God's awareness extends only to a knowledge of his own nature. And there's nothing saintly and nothing sinnerly about God. God is infinite being. Infinite being. To be a saint, he'd have to be something better than something else. And there's no better and there's no worse. There's only one. So it is with us. When we turn within, let us be very sure that if by some kind of accidental chance we are and always have been good, let us forget it as fast as we can because it may keep us out of the kingdom of heaven. I don't believe they have any more room in heaven for good people than for bad people. And therefore, let us forget goodness and badness and just remember being. I am being. Whether to human sense I appear to be good being at the moment or bad being, as a human being I have potentialities either way and anything could come along and upset the balance. So let's forget about our humanhood and remember this. In my divine being, all that God is, I am. And all that the Father hath is mine. And then let us open these ears inwardly to be receptive. And then when the word of God comes to us, you will discover that you will lose your goodness and your badness. You will have no more awareness of being good than you have of being bad. You'll just remember that you are being. And as a matter of fact, that it's really God being you. Then you will have no propensity, no possibility of sitting in judgment on your fellow man, who may be bad only out of ignorance, and who may be good just out of stupidity. Oh, there are loads of stupid good people. <laughs> and there are loads of good people who are merely good because they're afraid to be bad. <laughs> so, so let us uh, throw out all of this business about goodness and badness and just be spiritual. Just let us be of the household of God of the kingdom of God, neither good nor bad, just spiritual. And then as we develop this inner capacity to listen, our actions are guided by God and they are neither good nor bad, they're just uh, whatever it is that God meant them to be. But you have no way of evaluating them according to human standards because you do know this, don't you? that anything that you call good is merely your human evaluation. And by uh, testing you out far enough, we can almost find out what kind of a home you came from as to what their standards of good and evil were. And they may be entirely different than this family over here, who also had standards of good and evil, which may or may not have been actually good or evil. Now, In our work, we are never judging of our humanhood as to whether we are good or whether we are bad. Because unless we are willing to lose both our goodness and our badness, we are not going to arrive at the kingdom of God. Be assured, there is no clinging to goodness in the kingdom of God. There is only being, being. But 
think what happens once I recognize that there is only one being that means that my being is your being and therefore I can't be good to you or bad to you I can only be to you what I am to myself that's all and be assured I'm neither good to myself nor bad to myself I'm only that to myself which normally and naturally is watch this watch it very carefully The grace of God is not different in one individual than another because God has only one child, one offspring, one life. No matter how many billion times it may be lived on earth, it is the one life. Therefore, God is the same to all. the degree of harmony in our experience represents the degree in which we know this truth this is what determines the degree now Do you see that if I and the Father are one and if I am consciously aware of that oneness all that the Father hath is mine and all that God is I am and here we reach the fulfillment of a spiritual message that is where we reach the fulfillment of a spiritual message once we come to the realization that having dropped all thought of my good humanhood and my bad humanhood and having come to the center of my being in which I realize God as my life as my soul then and only then am I realizing that either the goodness or the badness of my human life means nothing they both have to be overcome in order that we can ultimately say why callest thou me good there is but one good the father in heaven and that is the good that is flowing that is the good that is healing that is the good that is enriching that is the good that is forgiving not I not you but that which flows from the father as the son And only in your surrender of the belief in your badness, only in the surrender of the belief in your goodness, can you spiritually attain. As long as you wish to persist in remembering the evil that has found an outlet through you, just so long will you keep yourself out of the kingdom of heaven but just so long as you keep remembering the good that has gone through you just so long will you keep yourself out of the kingdom of heaven and once you begin to realize that evil as such 
has only been a part of my existence through ignorance. And goodness has only been a part of my existence by the grace of God. Only then do you come to that place where you become an absolute instrument for the grace of God to flow. Then you become a blessing not only to yourself, but to everyone who comes within range of your experience. Just think in our work, how many people, how many thousands of people have come to us in lack and found abundance, have come to us in sin and found holiness, have come to us in lack and found abundance, and then ask yourself why? And you say, what, do you have all saints uh, working with you in this work? No. No, we don't only have all saints working with us in this work. I don't think any of us, well, maybe some of you have been saints, but you see, I can't claim it because my sister's sitting over there. <laughs> so I might as well admit that I haven't always been a saint, even if I am now, which I doubt, because my wife's sitting here. <laughs> So I can't get away with that. And humanly, none of us ever will be completely saints or sinners. But the point of the matter is that regardless of what degree of either of these we have been, it must be overcome. Until we come to this recognition that neither my human good nor my human bad is the ultimate determination. The ultimate determination is the recognition of my spiritual identity. Now, when I recognize my spiritual identity, now I can take you through a history book that circles the globe and show you some sinners who have become saints and some dead who have become alive and some poor who have become comfortable. And why? Not by any virtue of myself or yourself or the workers, but by virtue of the recognition of this, that the whole kingdom of God is within you. And it makes no difference at this moment whether that you is a saint or a sinner. The kingdom of God is within you. And in the moment that you begin to give recognition to this, even in your sins, and even while your sins are continuing, as long as you are giving recognition to the fact that the kingdom of God is within me, it in turn, that recognition in turn, will be the purifying experience. And then you will find what happens in the realm of supply. You see, in the realm of supply, there is only lack and abundance as long as we are dealing with the human realm. There is neither lack nor abundance in the spiritual realm. How many people really believe there is lack? I mean that there is abundance in the spiritual realm. They really believe the kingdom of heaven is just overflowing with gold and silver and diamonds and all the rest of these things. But I'm sure that when you get to heaven, you'll find they haven't got a scrap of anything there at all. Not a scrap of anything stored up. Because it's all consciousness unfolding. All consciousness unfolding. And it unfolds as the need appears. Now just think what happens to you once you realize that supply does not come because you're good and lack doesn't come because you're bad. 
You can be bad and have supply and you can be good and have no supply and vice versa. Lack comes because of the belief that supply is something tangible and we're all struggling for it. And not only struggling for it, but laying it up where moth and rust corrupt. Whereas supply is omnipresence and it has nothing to do with saintliness or sinlessness or sinfulness. Supply is omnipresence. When we recognize that, the miracle takes place. The sinner, without even thinking of wanting to be a saint, becomes one. We have been held in bondage to sinfulness by believing we were going to get everything when we got good. And we tried it and we couldn't get good. And if we got good, we didn't get the supply, so we went back to being bad. Please remember this. I and my Father are one. And all that the Father hath is mine. And this is true whether I am a saint or a sinner. I may not experience it while I'm a sinner, but it's true. If I know this truth when I'm a sinner, it will make me a saint. Why? Because most of the evil in the world is because we're trying to get something we haven't gotten want. And that automatically disappears when you have everything that you possibly can want all the time without even trying for it. Now, I and my father are one. All that the Father hath is mine. And what hath the Father? Life. Love. These are the two great facets. Life and love. And the life of the Father is my life. The love of the Father is my love. Therefore, I come into the demonstration of this by my inner attunement, by my recognition of this, and then letting the flow take place. Not by trying to change my outer conduct, if I'm sinning in some way, I'll just have to keep on until the sin stops. And if I'm being good, I'll have to keep on being good until that stops. Because be assured of this, being good has to stop the same as being bad has to stop. They both have to stop until we are neither good nor bad until we are just the instruments as which God is living on earth. Why callest thou me good? Why? There is but one good, the Father in heaven. And therefore, if temporarily we think we are bad, don't be concerned about it. If temporarily we think we are good, it might do good to uh, be concerned about it. But above all, realize this, that until I stop being both bad and good, I am not going to show forth the kingdom of God or the Son of God, which I am. Because the Son of God, which I am, is not good. Why callest thou me good? There is but one good, the Father in heaven. 
and there is no bed. This is entirely the illusion brought on by a human sense of what constitutes good and bad. Now, we come to as important a place as you will ever come in the spiritual life, and that is to where you face yourself with the truth that you are neither good nor evil. The evil that you have done is the ignorance into which you were born. The good that you think you have done has been the ignorant religion into which you were born. For you could be neither good nor evil. You are of the household of God, and it is the qualities and the activities of God that are yours. They're not yours. They're yours by the grace of God. They're God's manifest as you. You cannot take pride in your goodness. You cannot take pride in your virtue. You cannot take pride in your health. You can only recognize that the grace of God is upon you. Now, when you come to this, you will understand the fact that life is lived by grace. When you reach the place of knowing that life is lived by grace, you will have dropped your human qualities of goodness and your human qualities of badness. And believe me, both of these are evil. Any belief in your goodness or is as evil as the belief in your badness, just as the belief in your prosperity is just as evil as the belief in lack. Because prosperity is no more yours than lack. Prosperity is the gift of God, and there is no lack to those who know that. Lack is the product of the belief that supply is mine or yours, or his, or hers. This is the product of, this is where lack comes from. The belief that somebody has supply. Health is the grace of God. Supply is the grace of God. Purity is the grace of God. Why callest thou me good? There is but one good, the Father in heaven. And that is why when we come to this subject of good and bad, or lack and abundance, or purity and sinfulness, or spirituality and materiality, we perpetuate the entire human experience by the belief that I am good or evil, that I am sick or well, that I am rich or poor. And we come under and into the grace of God only in the realization that we are living by God's grace. Therefore, if we have that which the world calls virtue or goodness, it's ours by the grace of God. If we have that which is called abundance, it is by the grace of God. If we have health, it is by the grace of God. And in the realization of this, we surrender the false sense of human health of human supply, of human sinfulness, we surrender all of that 
And then we begin to live under the grace of God and by the grace of God. But not until we have lost all sense of being either good or bad, rich or poor, abundant or lacking, saint or sinner, until we've lost all sense of that and realize that the life we live is really the grace of God, then you will discover that you have lost the pairs of opposites, sickness and health, richness and poverty, goodness and badness, and you will find yourself just living out. You won't even be living. It will be living itself. And we will always be living with an attentive ear, watching that life unfold within our own selves. At the present time, fortunately, we have a sense of humor that uh, enables us to uh, still live in this world, but not be of it. That enables us to live uh, among our fellow men without seeming to be crackpots. It is this sense of humor that enables us to keep this locked up within ourselves. and not give it to others except as they come seeking it, hungering and thirsting for it, and then feeding it to them only in small doses until we are assured that uh, they can eat the meat of the word. Because it all comes down to this, I and my Father are one, and all that God is I am. Now, I, I can't say this outwardly and openly walking up and down the street. I can't go around to my friends and relatives with that on my lips. That is the mistake, mistake too many people in the religious world have made. Setting themselves apart from others. Whereas, the setting apart should only be within themselves outwardly live as other men, inwardly live by grace, and thereby attract to yourself those ready for the word. Don't preach it, you drive them away with it. Don't try to appear different than other men. Don't wear halos. Don't use language that sets you apart and makes them think, oh, you must be some kind of a saint. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you attain any degree of saintliness, keep it hidden within and appear outwardly to the world as other men, yet not acting as other men. Acting from within, from the saintliness that has developed within. Then, by what they sense in you or feel in you, they are attracted to being likewise minded. No one is ever going to be attracted to a spiritual message by preaching it. Because preaching it only reaches their human mind. Living it reaches their soul. And that is why all of the preaching there is and has been for 6,000 years hasn't changed mankind. They're still out throwing bums at each other. They're still out lying, cheating, defrauding. In spite of preaching, but you see there must be an end to preaching. There must be an end to telling other men how to live. And there must come a learning of the nature of God as our identity, locking it up within ourselves and letting it only shine out.
and then feeding it slowly and gradually to those who seek it. Not by appearing to be different than other men, but by being different. By being different only to the degree of the spiritual awareness that has unfolded within us and not trying to be better than we've realized. And not trying to use higher language than we have attained. The day comes when you will realize not only that I am not evil, I have never been evil, regardless of what evil sense may have uh, had possession of me at some time through spiritual ignorance. And you will realize that you are not good and never have been good, and that any qualities of good to which you have given expression has been that degree of godliness that has expressed itself through you. And then when you realize, I have never been evil, and I have never been good, the evil that manifested itself through me was the ignorance of truth. The good that manifested itself through me was my good fortune in having the grace of God shine through, not through any personal virtues of mine. Then in that degree, do you come to this place where you will definitely know that you could not be a saint or a sinner, that you cannot be rich or poor, that you cannot be sick or well. You can be none of these things, because the grace of God is your life, and it never changes, and it is no different in one than in another. But Upon our recognition of this truth, that it is the grace of God that lives my life, and I am neither good nor bad, and I am neither rich nor poor, I am neither saint nor sinner, I am neither sick nor well, I am neither alive nor dead. I am I. And you know something? That word I is our secret. Everything that the infinite way reveals, no matter how it does it, no matter what the message, it must ultimately lead you to the revelation that I am I. And all that I am, am I. And I am neither good nor bad. I am neither rich nor poor. I am neither saint nor sinner. I am neither Jew nor Gentile. I am neither white nor black nor yellow. I am I. All that God is, I am. All that the Father hath, is mine. And as long as I live in that inner awareness of I, of I-ness, I, I is the Father within me, and I is the Son that appears outwardly. And all that the Father within me is, the Son without is. And as long as I can live in that consciousness, I will never be good, and I will never be bad. And I will never be rich, and I will never be poor. I will never be a saint, and I will never be a sinner. I will always be I, 
and I was will always be showing forth the Iness which is God appearing as the Son. And I will claim no qualities for myself, neither good nor bad, rich nor poor, saint nor sinner, white nor black, nor yellow nor pink, none of these things. I am I. And you just say that to yourself, I, and see whether that I is oriental or occidental. Just see which it is, and you will discover I is neither oriental nor occidental, it is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free. I am I, and all that God is, I am, and all that the Father hath is showing itself forth through me. And the only thing I need to continuously show this forth on earth is the willingness to share it. The moment I lose that, I damn it up, and I lose it. It is only while I am willing to share it, but not share it in the sense of going out and shouting it from the housetops, not share it in the sense of telling it to those who are not interested. That isn't sharing it. That's trying to force it on somebody. No. My willingness to share it is shown forth in my willingness to impart to those who seek. Come without money and come with money. Come in saintliness and come in sinfulness. Come any way you like, but come and receive. There will be neither praise for your goodness and there will be no condemnation for your badness. There will only be the recognition of the saintliness which is the state of your soul. As it is, as it always has been, always will be. And when you can face this world, looking at everyone, seeing the saintliness of their soul with no judgment as to their human evil or human good, you have entered the Christ ministry and you are about your father's business and not until then. Thank you.